Hello, I'm Mark Baer. You're watching the Your Town Television Program. This is the second part of my interview with Greg Hawthorne, uh, the Hawthorne Gallery uh, in Big Sur, a great artist. And uh, where we left off is uh, with your wife, Susan, deciding you're going to leave Lansing, Michigan, and head to where there's a place on a cliff overlooking the ocean. <laughs> right. So well, that would, <laughs> you know, we were sitting in the hot tub, and, I, and she said to me, you know, there's a better place we can go. And, you know, I didn't think about it that much because uh, actually when we, her parents moved from Michigan to Pebble Beach uh, back in uh, 1971. And so uh, we went to visit them in 1974, the year after we got married. We got married in 73. A year later, she wanted me to go and, and check out California, and both of us went. And so we came to uh, their place in Pebble Beach. He, incidentally, in 1971, I don't want to make everybody feel bad, but he sold his house in Michigan for 52000 and bought his house in Pebble Beach for 51000 And so he was uh, very happy. It was a great move. He was uh, uh, cart distance to MPCC, so that was a real important thing to him. So we came to visit, visit his house, and he showed me around. I didn't play golf back then, and I, uh, I looked at his, at his place, and it was cold during the, during the summertime. We just left Michigan. It was beautiful weather, and it was, it was cold and foggy. And then I wasn't too knocked out, and they took us to Carmel. And Carmel, I thought, was full of artists, and I get there, and there's all these little galleries that weren't as, ex 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 as exciting as I thought they were going to be. And so then uh, I'm just kind of so kind of disappointed. We went actually took a bus tour up to Sausalito because I wanted to see the artists in Sausalito. And again, it was a lot of poster shops, and uh, that was a little disappointing. And so then he said, "Well, I'm going to take you down to where all the hippies are." And I said, "Where's that?" He said, "In Big Sur." And so we w drove down to Big Sur, and uh, we went over to Nepenthe, and and I had a beer and an amb Ambrosia burger, and uh, said. Uh, wow, this is fantastic. I'm going to buy this place and make it into my studio. And everybody laughed because I just got married. I had no money and uh, everything. And I said, well, if you think that's funny, I'll buy the property across the street. And my father-in-law said, oh, no, you're, that's going to be way too expensive. Well, eight years later, I bought that property across the street. Wow. Again, this is n it was not planned. It just kind of comes together that we did a show, we were invited to Palm Springs to do a, a couple of shows at galleries, and they were very successful. And then I said, my wife, I rented a house for a month in Palm Springs, and our son is one, he's running around with a hose and he's just having a great time. And so um, I said, well, let's move to California. And so obviously my assistant and, and uh, my wife go, yes, that's a great idea. So I said, but do you want to live in the desert? And they said, no, it's too hot. Let's go look at something on the coast. So we went over to the coast, and we started in, in down by San Diego and worked our way up. And then uh, we were visiting her parents, and there was a little blurb in the uh, uh, paper, and it said across from Nepenthe. So I had remembered what Nepenthe was like. It was right across the street, and it said a, a cabin with a, uh, with a small studio. You know, it was a leather shop, a little adobe building. So I said, we got to go see this. And she said, no, m make sure we go up to uh, Oregon, you know, because that's where my brother was. So we went up there, and then my father-in-law called me. It was raining every single day for five days straight. My, my father-in-law calls me and says, I think this is what you're looking for. Great, we'll be on the next plane. So we went down, we flew on the next plane, came down. We're driving. They met us at the airport. The sun's coming up as we're driving down Highway 1. And we drove onto the property, and it was just beautiful. It was a little cabin, and it was overgrown, but went out there and s to see the view. And I looked at the realtor, and I said, I'll take it. And, uh, and, and he goes, he was shocked. You know, this is 1982. This is when the recession uh, interest rates were 15% and everything else. But uh, I wanted that property so bad, it was just uh, it was great. Wow. So then, uh, then you start building the the construction, the gallery. So what's the how, how does how does the gallery get built? Well, the uh, gallery comes much later. We, we you know so we're we're in 1982, okay. and so uh, I had to first build my studio. Had to build the, the cabin was all run down. We had to redo the cabin, and then we had to build a studio, which the Coastal Commission came out and uh, uh, approved, and uh, they. You know, I asked them, and I heard that they were really tough. 
So I was really, you know, we had uh, this little adobe building filled with frames and paintings and everything else, and it was so overflowing inside. And uh, so the Coastal Commission, this woman comes walking up my driveway, and she looks at the, uh, she comes walking up and she looks at me and she says, you really are an artist. I said, yeah, well, that's why I need an artist studio. And she said, well, usually they want them for a, to make an, a, an extra house or apartment. You're approved. Boom. And she said, I'm glad to see this, and walked off. And we were approved that quick. Wow. That was great. It was, uh, you know, it's, uh, it, a lot of people have problems with the Coastal Commission, but at that particular moment, that was, uh, it was perfect. It was, he just walked in and said, you're approved. Wow. So it was cool. So the gallery, then the... How, the gallery doesn't come until 1995. Okay, so okay. you so you're there painting in the in, in the in the small house. No, I'm painting in the in the, uh, in, the, in, the in the we had a stu small studio, studio yes. right? Then we built a, a much larger studio, okay. which you, you've seen. You yes. come down, and um, that's the same studio we built. And then uh, so then I was just painting, and remember I have to pay for all this stuff. You know, I mean, you know, even though I'm still a pretty young guy, and I'm working at, you know, and doing shows in in L. A. I went. Uh, I was shipping the galleries in Miami, and I'm, you know, doing everything I can to pay for all the stuff because I had all this construction that I had done with my studio, fixing up the house. So I'm just working like crazy just to keep up with all that. Then when 1995 rolls around, or actually it was 1993 when we started to get the approvals, and um, I decided that I wanted to have my own gallery. I want to control my own life, you know, because the problem was that. Galleries would come in and go out of business, and a lot of times they forget to pay you and before they went out of business, or they, uh, they forgot that they p sold your piece two months ago and they didn't send you the check. So I said, I want to control the life. So our policy at our gallery is that as soon as a piece is sold, we call the artist immediately, tell them it's sold, so that number one, they know, they, we pay at the beginning of the next month, every, at the beginning of every month. And they know that that piece is sold, and they know that money's coming in, and so they can also be working on other stuff, and they know this cash is going to be coming in. So that's so, good business for them and good business for yes, you. Yes, it's great for everybody. Yes. And, and, and they get the check right away, and it's, you know, we try to work everything just the way that I would like to have it done for myself. Plus, you you were living an <coughs> itinerant lifestyle in many ways, like a traveling musician to to yeah. be on the road all the time to to, to sell. Yeah, before I built the gallery, I was on the road a lot more, and uh, we were shipping all over the world. And then I had to, you know, I flew to uh, Taipei, I flew to uh, different things for big uh, big jobs that we were doing. Uh, sometimes I flew one time to um, the Hamptons. We had a semi full art going to a uh, house on uh, Long Island and it was uh, you know it was, <coughs> it was very exciting it was a lot of fun and, and interest but now uh, that I'm older and I I'd rather just concentrate on the work and then I have it all centralized out of here so people come to see me instead of I have to come to see them um, and it's a <coughs> you're living you grew up in a family of artists and you're living with a family of artists so let's let's talk about how there's a lot of Hawthorns in the Hawthorne gallery right yeah, because uh, but we're probably the only family, I think, in the United States where all siblings became artists on different mediums, and we all married artists in different mediums. So all our wives and husbands, you know, there's three of us, and so we're all, each one, and the, uh, the husbands and wives, my, my sister's husband and my brother's wife and my wife are all artists themselves. So uh, that's very unusual. And then our children, obviously, thought that being an artist was just a normal thing because been around everybody that they knew were an artist, so they thought it was a regular job. And, and everybody's um, um, <coughs> doing uh, something a little bit different. Yes. Well, let's, let's talk about that a bit. Yeah, right. You know, I started off as a painter, then I became, uh, started working in sculpture and furniture design because uh, one of the uh, greatest jobs I, I did have was the Post Ranch. They, they wanted me to, they'd come to me and say, well, Greg, can you design a stool for us? We can't find an interesting stool. I said, yeah, sure, I can design a stool. So I designed the stool for them. And then people would come into the Post Ranch, and then they would say, well, I want one of those stools. And, you know, and then I started doing some wilder designs. And then they all loved them, and then that, that started to sell those. And they said, can you do a chair? Sure, I can design a chair. So I designed a chair. 
then I started designing, uh, you know, uh, tables, you know, coffee tables, end tables, dining tables, and uh, just different things. And, uh, and I just keep getting challenged. Hey, I need a sideboard table. And I just decided to draw one of those up. So now I've, you know, actually thousands of drawings of different types of furniture and sculpture. And then they said, can you do a sculpture for us? Sure, I can do that. And so and that's, you know, that's how it leads. One thing, so I was getting paid to learn as I was going along. Oh, that's fabulous. And uh, your, your son <coughs> uh, graduated from RISD. He's yes. doing sculpture. Your daughter's yeah. doing glass. Yes. She uh, went to uh, CCA and she, he went to RISD and they're, they're both graduated, uh, you know, with honors and, you know, top of their class, they got awards. Um, they they're both very uh, talented kids uh, you know Taylor does most of our fabrication my son does uh, you know in our fabrication building in Sand City and then um, he also does all his own work uh, Shelby is a glass artist and she does uh, she did all the uh, plateware or most of it for the post ranch on the um, uh, you know if you have some unusual dish and that comes to your table is probably done by Shelby and the glass. And then she, but she has her own uh, line of uh, dishware and, you know, uh, and flatware. And then she also does wall pieces, large wall pieces and freestanding sculpture. And Taylor does the same. So it, it's, um, they're kind of delving off, and but I'm glad because they can, uh, Shelby works in the gallery too. Mm -hmm. So I want her to learn about sales because you have to have all these elements together and Taylor knows everything about production of things. So he I worked for, he got to apprentice with Albert Paley. Yes, he did. And yes. he learned a lot from Albert. And, uh, um, and he's, he's very uh, conscious of detail. And, you know, sometimes I'm, it's driving me nuts because it's taken a little longer than I expected. But uh, he wants the detail to be perfect. And I, that's good. And uh, my daughter um, is just, a, she is great in the gallery. People love her and she is a, She's a wonderful personality, and uh, so that's, I want them with their two personalities and their two skills, then we want them to keep going, and I, my grandsons are only three and one, so I haven't figured out what they're going to do yet, but uh, we'll work them into the program. And so, <coughs> and what's interesting is, and, and then you have a, your, your brother, you have a, 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 a sister gallery in, in Bend, Oregon. Is it outside of Bend? Or? No, it's in, actually in Port Orford, which, okay. uh, which is uh, close to North Bend. Okay. It's right on the ocean. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a very, my brother and I are partners in that, and uh, it's uh, right on the ocean, and uh, it's a fabulous place. You can actually walk out of our restaurant or gallery and walk right onto the beach. Wow. And it's, uh, this, the beauty is amazing. It's, uh, so he runs that thing, and if you ever get up to the southern coast of Oregon, it's called the Redfish Port Orford. It's the Redfish Restaurant, and uh, it's the food is great. We're rated at one of the top restaurants on the southern coast of Oregon, and um, we have our wine list is uh, in the Wine Spectator because uh, we're, we're have a great wine list too. Wow. Um, so how important? I mean, first of all, within the Hawthorne clan, as you're in the gallery, the there's a lot of it's all got the Hawthorne vibe. It, uh, there's you know, the, it's, the DNA is in the glass, the DNA is in your painting, the DNA is in your son's work. It's, it's very interesting how it fits all together. And then you brought in outside artists that kind of seamlessly work into the... Right, the, into, the, the, into the program. In, in, into the program. It's, it's not like you're... Uh, I had the experience of walking in uh, yesterday and you walk into what seems, feels at first to be a very sparse space. It's very clean, very sparse, uh, uh, still dominated by the outside oceans and beautiful color surroundings. And then as you start looking, you're overwhelmed with the density of the art because everything is powerful. Uh, everything seems to speak to each other. And uh, it, it, there's a harmony in how it's all put together. Um, Thank you. Well, what it is is that when you put together, I used to go into galleries as a kid, and I would always go in, and some of them I just loved, some of them I just found as ridiculous. Uh, you know, there's a there's a very fine line where there's too much work or there's not enough. Uh, there's a fine line where it's, you know, your eye is looking for something interesting, and if it can find something, you know, we tried 
we have work of Albert Paley, and we have Max de Moss in bronze, and we have uh, 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 Michael Gustafson in ceramics. Uh, my sister-in-law is a ceramic artist also. The, um, they're all uh, very talented people, and you know, and so when they, it's easy to blend when you have interesting, unique, and all our pieces are unique. So you, if you blend those together, you can make, it's a, kind of putting a sculpture together inside the, the gallery. The gallery is a building as a sculpture. The design of how we place pieces is supposed to be somewhat of a sculpture. And then the pieces are, are themselves. So it gives you like, it hits you in a lot of different ways. And plus the view is spectacular. So I mean, I, I'm trying to get all those senses being hit. And then if we got some nice music in, we got something to listen to. That way, when you walk in, you're just kind of like, wow, this is really fun. And a lot of people, even if they're not into contemporary art, are just, they, I've heard people say to me, um, or to my salespeople, this, uh, I'm not into contemporary art, but I just love this space. And they, they don't understand. They what's love making, that, what's, what's making, making them work. feel the way they feel, they, yes. Yeah, right. They don't, they say they don't like, they're not into the contemporary art. But the thing is, they don't even, they don't understand it, but it makes them feel good. And when you have that happening, and that's the way it should be. It's, it's not a supposed very to, complex simplicity right. that you have going on. It, it, it's not supposed to just hit you, you know, like, well, and you just focus on one little painting and that, that's it. You're supposed to get this experience, and then as you start to look around, you start to enjoy each of the individual pieces, you know, and then you can kind of pick it up. Yeah. And, but, and, and, and so, <coughs> uh, just to finish this segment out, uh, lifestyle is very important I in what this is. You're, you're really talking about a lifestyle, but you're talking about it in a very deep sense that, you know, as I've come to see, you've got family, and the other artist is extended family, and that art is, you, you can feel the force when it's together, and the, and the cohesiveness of it, and so it's a celebration of both um, the natural beauty and of deeper family values. I mean, you, you, you've lived it. Well, it's, it's, life is about a lifestyle. I mean, you know, like, you know, to be the, the most famous artist in the world is not that important. Having the best lifestyle in the world is far more important. And lifestyle, I mean, I don't mean just goofing off and being able to enjoy just, you know, running on the beach and so forth. I mean lifestyle and the fact that you can work the way and, and, and it takes a lot of work, but it, you know that you love doing it and you can keep working all the time. It, it feeds you so you, you, know, you can do the things that you want to do, have a, a lifestyle uh, that you want to have, go to a restaurant, go to anything that you want to do, but any, being able to do the work that you love to do. I mean, that is that, lifestyle. That's the thing. You've done it in a beautiful thing. You've created a vision, a dream, uh, and a dream with a lot of heart in it. Okay. And, and, I, and I think that's, the, that's what comes across. And when people walk in the gallery, they're having an experience. You well, know, I, I don't think anybody comes to Hawthorne Galleries and, and, and forgets that they've been there. No. You know. no, that's not what we're supposed to do. But it's uh, supposed to be that kind of experience. Yeah, so that's, that's fabulous. And then uh, the other thing that knocks me out is that you do these big sculptural pieces. And uh, we'll get to that in the, uh, in, the, in the next segment a little bit. And we're also going to get to, in the next segment, we're going to talk about community and what the artist brings to the community. And we're going to talk about Sand City. OK, great. So anyway, I'm Mark Baer. I'm with Greg Hawthorne. You're watching Your Town Television. And uh, stay tuned for the third segment. And we're going to talk about what the artist brings to the community. Thank you. <laughs>